everybody. Uh, welcome to my video about Easley Blackwood's 15-tone etude and how you would play it in 12-tone equal temperament, or whether that can even be done. So, if you know about Easley Blackwood's 12 microtonal etudes, he wrote one in each microtonal equal temperament from 13 to 24. And the 15 is very traditional because it uses triads. Uh, so Easley Blackwood's 15-tone etude would be a good example of something that would be easy to play had Western culture evolved in 15-tone equal temperament. It starts with, you know, a minor chord. So this is a pretty direct melody, and in 12, we could play it like this. So we could have some analogous harmony going on there. So why doesn't it work to play the 15 equal in 12? Well, first, I need to give a quick explanation of 15 tone equal temperament and Easley Blackwood's notation. So what you need to know about 15 tone equal temperament is that it has major and minor thirds as well as perfect fifths and fourths, so you can still create triads. But melodically, it does not have a major second. You have two different choices instead. You have an 160 cent step, and you have a 240 cent step. People have different ways to deal with this, but easily Blackwood has a very uh, formulaic and sort of successful way to deal with it, I think. He disguises the uh, non-major seconds as 240 cent steps, and he very rarely uses 160 cent steps in sequence with one another stepwise. So in 12 tone equal temperament, we could have And in 15 tone equal temperament, we can almost have that exact same thing. You notice that with this opening theme, we have a so do and then we have a re me. And it just sounds like it's a little bit stretched going out to the minor third. So this is kind of the strategy to deal with the whole thing. In fact, this is even why in the first part of the song, he doesn't actually go to fa on the outside, or at least he doesn't go a perfect fourth above the tonic note. He goes the small tritone higher just because of that 240 cent step. Listen to the, uh, the difference here. This is how Easley Blackwood originally wrote it. So this, this step here is 240 cents instead of 160. So at 160, we get this sound. So he probably thought that the 160 cent step sounded a little bit too out of kilter, although both steps are technically part of the scale. He could have used either this step, 160, or the 240. So if we compare those... And that's sort of how it sounds. And then with the lower 160 cent step size in the opening, it would be more like... So this makes a perfect fourth, but it also has this step size here. So that's basically easily Blackwood's main way of dealing with it. So really, when we think about the fact that the beginning of this etude is composed of triads with melodic content, and the fact that Easley Blackwood uses 240 cents to represent something like a major second, we can actually derive something analogous in 12 tone equal temperament, but we just have to figure out where to break the chain. So in this video, I'm really just going to play the first part of the etude, like where we go back to the tonic, uh, Easily Blackwood is using a 10-note scale. Uh, it's a symmetrical scale that starts on D down that goes like this. So that scale is called Blackwood 10, and he's using it a lot like a minor scale. Let's compare, shall we? Here is how it sounds in 15. So we start with D down minor, and I'll put in the lead sheet here.
that's sort of what we have. And Blackwood 10 involves a chain of fifths that reconciles in five tone equal temperament. So in 12 tone equal temperament, here's how we could start out. And now here's the part where we, we have to break the chain or make a decision. And I'm going to go about it two ways. Uh, I'll play it the first way, and in the first way, when I get to this point in the music, I'll play B minor to F sharp minor, which is how Blackwood has it written in the music because of how the fifths are ascending. And then in the second way, I'll play C minor and G minor and talk about sort of the differences between them. So here's the first way with B minor. Here is the second way with C minor. Alright, so if we look at the lead sheet of Easley Blackwood's etude here, or at least the harmony, which is quite uh, obvious and clear, even with some passing tones in the writing, we have D down minor, A down minor, so that ascends by a perfect fifth, which makes it unambiguous in 12 tone equal temperament. We basically go from D minor to A minor, and we use 240 cents as our major second like thing. Good. So the reason we get to B minor and it's a little bit ambiguous is because we have contradictions in terms of what notes should sound like what other notes. So basically, these two little chords here, this B down minor and F sharp down minor, are the problem. Now, if we go from A down minor uh, here to B down minor, what we have is... Uh, Beforehand, in the melody, we were playing this sort of descending line that almost sounds like Me, Re, Do on the chord, right? Where we have C, B down, A down. And this B down needs to sound the same as the one in this chord. And because of that, we need it to really be like B minor. But it also the B down minor chord also kind of sounds like it's a chromatic median away from the A down minor chord, and when it cycles up a fifth to the next chord, that chord needs to be the four, four, in our uh, D down minor sort of thing. The way that Easley Blackwood notates B down minor and F sharp down minor is pretty logical because in the moment, I think the B B minor, F sharp minor version in 12 tone equal temperament works the best, but then the fact that the F sharp minor chord and the G minor chord aren't the same in 12 tone equal temperament sort of ruins the progression, although you can kind of get away with it in the moment. I also like the F sharp minor version in 12 tone equal temperament because then it also sounds like a chromatic median when we jump back to A minor. So if we start from the A minor chord, change from F sharp minor to A minor sounds like a chromatic median, because otherwise, if we use G minor, this progression doesn't sound as if it's as far away like it should be, while in 15, both of the changes, the ones from A down minor to B down minor, 
and the change from F sharp down minor to A down minor. Both of those sound like chromatic mediate changes, but you know, Blackwood has to pick one where the chain is broken. So he chooses F sharp down minor to A down minor as the place to break that chain. Or he could have said that A down minor goes to C down minor in 15 tone equal temperament. And this probably could have been another way that he would have gotten away with it, but the melody content is easier to notate if he uses B down minor. So I think that's why he made that choice. It's like if we have A down minor and it goes to B down minor, then F sharp down minor, then A down minor, that's the crucial point at which the Zen harmonic part of the progression really causes the version in 12 to break down. So what I'll do now is sort of briefly play a few of the bars against each other. So first, I'm going to try playing uh, the 15 version, just the first few bars, and then play the first few bars of the other one, and then do the B minor version. Okay, now let's pretend we just played the A minor chord. And then... There's that one. And now let's try comparing it to the G minor version. easily Blackwood writes in B down minor, F sharp down minor in the music, I feel like the register of the 15 tone equal tempered version is really a lot closer to C minor and G minor. If I just compare the chords themselves, let's try that. But then if I try B minor, I don't think it'll be as close. See how one is closer than the other. So really it's kind of a matter of debate and things are up in the air. And of course the music was written in 15 tone equal temperament, so it wasn't meant to be played in 12 tone equal temperament. So what do we think about that F sharp down minor going to A down minor instead of G down minor going to A down minor? This is pretty interesting. Here, when we have... When we have E down, going to G minor down, that's technically a 240 cent step. If we go to E down minor here, this going to here then sounds See how it also kind of sounds like it's a major second up? So you might even be able to say it's like minor going to G minor instead of E minor going to G minor. So there are multiple places to break the chain besides that one point in the music. That's just a point I focused on because the chords don't move by fifths at that exact location. This is another point where you could theoretically break the chain and say, okay, I'm going to play that melodic sequence in F minor instead of E minor. Anyway, here's a quick comparison of sort of the tonic chords. And you can see when I go to A down minor here. Or... 
So this is really closer. Almost the same. So really, E down minor and A down minor, I think, are the farthest away from their 1210 equal tempered equivalents. So that's why you can make those interesting decisions there and the chain kind of breaks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comparison video. There sure was a lot to talk about, and I'm sure I could have done more to compare the melodies. It seems like there's always so much to do. I will just play the melodies kind of beside each other. So, uh, maybe like this.